John chapter 15, verse 7. He says, If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask anything and it shall be given unto you. It means that if you choose to do my will, if you choose to follow, if you choose to obey, if you choose to stay in me, if you choose to use my words, if you choose to follow my injunctions, there's nothing according to my own plan and will that you want to do that I will not give you grace or grant you grace to be able to do it. We are my this evening. Very simple. I want us to just see that the Spirit of God is the Spirit that enables us to receive help to get help and to be able to help others to achieve their purpose. You know? And the Bible also says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, can I have it on the screen, please? Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It's up. All right, he said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God here means total. Praise God. He means the Trinity. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there is something that, we, that I need to just um, point towards this evening, is that the Holy Spirit in itself is part of the Trinity, a suppressive part of that is a, 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 a part of the Trinity. So, like you have God the Father, God the Son, and God, God the Holy Spirit. So, it's not separated, however, can carry out different purposes per time. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Spirit of God is to us, and what, that's what the Holy Spirit of God is. So, the Holy Spirit is a person of the, it's part of the person of the Trinity, and is also part of the God, uh, the God, uh, the family of that. Godhead, God, uh, God, God the Son, I mean, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we can say the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Hallelujah. If you check your scripture, so like the power I said that is being released, released like I said it's not a really shaker or the light, is a type of power that helps you to begin to do good things. Like this scripture says, it says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. So the anointing comes with the Holy Ghost and with power. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when you receive that thing, you receive power to begin to do what? We say, we went about doing good and doing all that we are oppressed of the devil. If God wants to give you power, he needs to know what he wants to use the power for. Mm-hmm. We should always see that the intention of a thing or the heart of a thing needs to be understood. Before you can join other things. And he will always say that if you know my heart, then you can tell that my intentions are right. Mm-hmm. So it means that God, before God wants to give you that thing, which is his power, he needs to know that you are in his will. You are in obedience to the things that he has called you out to do. I want us to now say prayer as we are seated. That Father, let my whole life be an expression of your goodness. Let my whole life be a testament of your goodness. Let my entire life... Be, be a testimony that you are good. Let my whole life be a testimony that you are good. That I will not look around and begin to look helpless. Let my whole life be a testament of your goodness. In the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Are you praying? Prayer? I say, Father, help me. Lord. Let my whole life be, an, a, be, be a testimony of your goodness. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we are free. Amen. That song that says, Daily as I live, often as I breathe. Can you sing with me? Let my whole life be an expression of your grace. Daily as I live, daily as I live, often as, often as I breathe. Let my whole life be an expression of your grace. We cry, we cry, Abba Father. We cry, Abba Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We cry, Abba Father. We cry, Abba Father. You say, Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Daily as I live. Daily as I live. It's a prayer we are praying. Come on. Often as I breathe. Let my whole life be expressions of your Daily, daily as I live. 
as I please. Daily as I please. Often as I Often as I please. Let my whole life be a special talk. We cry, we cry, Abba Father. We cry, Abba Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We cry, Abba Father. We cry, Abba Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. That prayer still remains the same. That Father, let my entire life be a testament of your goodness. Let my entire life, let everything that I do, let everything that I that I ever have to do, let it be a testament of your goodness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. According to the Oxford Dictionary, obedience is being defined as the compliance with an order, request, or law. The last part now says submission to another's authority. Don't forget the, the title is very simple. It said the importance of obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So obedience, according to the Oxford, Oxford Dictionary, says that obedience is the compliance with an order, request, or law. Submission to another's authority. That part I want to hold on to is the submission to another's authority. Other ones can be checked. This one says, in submission to another's authority. It means that we need to know that if we must truly say we are obedient, we must be in submission to the authority of the Holy Spirit. Now, who or what is the Holy Spirit? It's okay to write the will of God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, According to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19. God is his spirit. He manifests himself, himself in three persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit possesses the attributes of God. And I want to just list to us before I move on tonight, what are the attributes of the Holy Spirit? Number one says, the Holy Spirit is omniscient. Praise God. John chapter 14, verse 26. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. Number two, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. That's Psalms, 1, Psalms 139, verse 7 to 10. Psalms 139, verse 7 to 10. Then the last one I want to mention is that the Holy Spirit is eternal. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. I'll take that again. Number one. Is omniscient. John chapter fourteen verse twenty six. Number two is omnipresent. Psalms, Psalm one thirty nine verse seven to ten. Then the last one says he is eternal. That's number three. Hebrews chapter nine verse fourteen. Before we go ahead, I also want to list to us this evening the unique personalities of the Holy Spirit, so that we can know. The things that we are going to be missing if we don't choose to stay in accordance or in alliance with what God is saying to us for time through His Spirit. Or what we stand to enjoy if we stay in obedience. So let's write this down too. He says the unique personalities of the Holy Spirit. Number one, he says the Holy Spirit has intellect. That means the Holy Spirit is sound. Praise God. He has understanding ahead of time. So see, because He's God. Hallelujah. He says the Holy Spirit has intellect. It has will and it has emotion. The scripture to back that up is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. He has intellect, will, and emotion. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. Then secondly, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. I'm under the unique personalities of the Holy Spirit. Number two. The Holy Spirit is not water, fire, wind, or a dove. Although 
they may express different aspects of his personality. I'll take that again. Number two says, the Holy Spirit is not water, fire, wind, or a dove. Although they express different aspects of his personality. Lastly, about what the Holy Spirit does and who he is, I want to mention the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I'll take it again. The work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Number one, the Holy Spirit, he represents all that Jesus is to us. The Holy Spirit represents all that Jesus is to us. You can find the scripture to back that up in John chapter 14, verse 16. The Holy Spirit represents all that Jesus is to us. Number two, he convicts us of sin. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. You can also find a scripture to back that up in John chapter 15, verse 26. I like this part so much. Number three says, He teaches us all things. The Holy Spirit teaches us all things. That's John 14, 26. Then number four says, The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. I like to have the scripture. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Romans chapter 8. 26 and 27. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. Bro of God, can we look up as we read together this evening powerfully? Romans chapter 8, verse 26. At the count of one, two, three, let's go. Likewise, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for, as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Oftentimes, I've seen on our social media currently where people will say it's because people are empty or people lack words, they only lack wisdom. That's why they always pray the Holy Spirit. And I'll be like, why are you an illiterate? Why are you spiritually backward? Why are you not spiritually sound or discerning to understand that even the best of your English cannot interpret what you are going through? Mm. The best of your understanding with your lingua or your local palace cannot even tell God what you are actually talking about. The Spirit of God that helps us to mediate, like is a mediator in between, can help. He knows what you are going through. According to the will of God, he can also tell you what you should pray about. So why are you so ignorant of the knowledge that God has given you to not begin to think that it is because people don't know what to pray about or the English that you use? That's why they're always praying in tongues. Thank God for the man of God that we have that has taught us that we don't pray, we don't speak of our own flesh, we don't speak of our way, we teach the word of God according to the scriptures. Yes, so this will never be wrong. Praise God. Alleluia. This will never go wrong. There's no way you'll be, you'll be lacking of words and then you remember that there's a spirit that you have that can help you more than you can even speak English to talk to God and you're not going to neglect that spirit. That is, that is, that is black as that. You know? So, when I saw that post, I just knew that this person is not spiritually trained. Mm. Or does not understand what this particular scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 22, I mean 26 and 27 says. He said, it teaches, it helps us to pray. How long can you even pray in English? What can you, how, how long do you even think you have the wisdom to gather grammar, to create English and start to pray? You must be Shakespeare. <laughs> you, you, you really must be very sound with English. To pray for four hours without the spirit. And Bishop always said that there is, there, is the, uh, there is the word and there is a spirit. So it means beyond the English, there is a spirit that should back up what you are doing. And this is the spirit that we have here. And now you are not saying that you don't want the Holy Spirit. You are strong enough. You don't need it. You think that you have the confidence. You don't arrive. You don't, you don't. So you now have the English to speak to God. The same way that the English, that the, 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 what, the language they used to write the Bible was what English. How do you now know that what God is saying? I, 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 I did I know that. <laughs> but, you know, Bishop has taught us that we should never, in fact, it was a warning, that we should never speak of our minds or speak of what is what we are going through. When we, have, when we have to talk to people of God, always have to speak the scripture, speak the word that carries life. That's why he says that. He, what we always say that he has the capacity to talk to you. 
but he doesn't even speak by himself. That's a man that understands the place of the Holy Spirit. Talk more of you that don't even know how much God is helping you at that time to now say you have the capacity to now begin to speak English, to pray for four hours. I don't want to belong to that clan. Hallelujah. Yes, then number six now says, it shows, it shows us things to come. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God can tell you your future. He can tell you what to do, the next step to take. There are promptings of the Spirit that anytime you really, really are connected, you know that our God is a speaking God and he speaks through his mouth with mouthpiece, which is the Holy Spirit. You know, he says in this, he said, he shows us the things to come. If you check John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14, you will find that day. John 16, verse 13 to 14. Let's go to the last one. And he says, the Holy Spirit reveals to us our inheritance. Praise God. The Holy Spirit reveals to us our inheritance. This one is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 2, 12, and 13. Can we look up the word of God? Let's pray together again powerfully. At the count of one, two, three, go. Now, now we have received, received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of God. Praise God. Can we take it again, people of God? One more time. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Hallelujah. So the spirit of God reveals things to us. Sometimes Bishop always tell us, sometimes Bishop always tell us that it's not just um, uh, um, guessing or guesswork that he always teaches you to be discerning. He shows you the things that are supposed to come. He will tell you what to do per time. He reveals to us the things that are supposed to come. So that's a spirit that God has given us freely. But that obedience to that word or to that instruction that the Spirit is given to us may not be able to come to pass if we are disobedient. So I have to highlight the meaning of obedience to us first and what the Holy Spirit is, who he is to us, his attributes and his personality. For us to understand the real importance why we need to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit in obedience all times. So if we have all of these things in the Holy Spirit, and we are not functioning at our optimal level, it means that we do not understand how much God has helped us with this Holy Spirit. It means that we are not in the know of how much God has designed this Spirit to show us the things that are supposed to come. So that means if you have the Holy Spirit actively working in your life, or you are engaging it by the things he has told you to do. So Bishop told me that there's a way the Spirit of God works in obedience with us. Let me just share with us, because I was very close at the time. I was... I wanted to know the difference between my own mind and maybe the Spirit of God or something. And he said, the Holy Spirit always talks in third person singular that do this. You should. Or you are supposed to. So it does, so your own spirit can suggest to you. That one comes in an instruction and calls you, like puts you in the picture like yourself. If it's your own will, it's a quite it's a different conversation. So the Holy Spirit is very, very active to the degree at which you also are obedient. So, for instance, imagine knocking a door for, uh, for about 30 minutes and nobody's opening. You have a choice to either go or keep knocking, which I'm very sure that after a while you probably have to leave if nobody's answering you. So it's the degree of your obedience that that Spirit can come into you, can stay, can work righteousness into you. So it works in it part time to how much obedience you have been given or you have already been following, or we have been processing as the Spirit of God is, is helping us. So let's open the Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 15. I want to show us that Abraham's story. I want us to read Abraham's story to really understand the concept of obedience to full, to the full, to the, to the, to the, to the latter, rather. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 5. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 5. It's not too long, you read, so I want us to try it together. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 5. Can we try to get the book of God? 1, 2, 3, go. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kingdom, and from thy father's house, unto the land of Shiloh. Number 2. 
and I will make of thee a great nation, I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and cause them that cause thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So, so Abraham departed, as the Lord has spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Number five. And Abraham took his wife, Sarah's wife, and the Lord's wife's son, and all the substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they Praise God. Hallelujah. This story of Abraham is a story of obedience and also the story of faith. It was surprising to me to find out that Abraham is actually a proselyte. So I found out in that same scripture where you understand that Abraham was an idol worshiper. He had nothing to do with this, uh, this pattern of um, religion before. We say proselyte, somebody who converted from a religion to another or from a faith to another, you know. And what just struck me was that, as Bishop has always said it, that refuse to let your background be the determining factor for your future. So if a person like Abraham, the person who now now currently call the father of faith, all over the world, who everybody receives blessings through, was a proselyte that converted from a religion to another, and God still used him this much. Then there is no story, there is no past, there is no current situation that should stop you from entering into what God has designed for you as a person. Yes, it all lies on how much you are willing to enter into that level of obedience with the Holy Spirit and what God is planning to do in your life. So tell yourself this thing and say, my past will not stop me from my making past, progress. Can you my pray? My past will not stop me from making progress. My past will not stop me from achieving God's plan for my life. My past will not stop me from achieving God's plan for my life. Come on, don't get cold on me. Say, my past will not stop me from achieving God's plan for my life. My past will not stop me from achieving God's plan for my life. In the name of Jesus. You will say from that story that what Abraham displayed here was first of all, complete obedience. Which had nothing to do with understanding of where he was going or what he had to do. So sometimes our obedience is not complete or it's not even in the right measure when we're trying to check if what the person is saying to us, if we feel is physically or emotionally right one time. It doesn't have to sound like what you want to hear, please God. Okay. It doesn't have to sound like what you think it should be. Yes, sir. If it doesn't, if you are not in accordance with what God is saying part time, then you are in, obe- you are in disobedience. Mm. It doesn't have to look like what you are thinking. It doesn't have to sound like what you are thinking. Yes, if you are not following what God is asking you to do part time, then you are in disobedience. Yes, How Abraham moved from this place is something that I've been trying to study till now because I still don't understand what prompted him to say whatever this God says, I will do. But this man stays in total obedience and chose to move not just himself, his family, Lot, and all that he had gathered. Abraham truly is a testament of that scripture in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, that says, Choose this day whom ye will serve. He now says, As for me and my family, we shall serve you. He says, Everything that concerns me. You know? So I'm saying this for us to know that obedience in this context has nothing to do with how much of wisdom we think we have at time. Concerning a particular thing that either God is sharing with us or that we are received through either through the logos or the Rema word of God. So it means we need to begin to understand that if we have to stay in obedience, it's like mumu mumu setting. It almost looks impossible to do God with your head. In fact, we saw who has said it that <laughs> which means by your own capacity, by your own wisdom, by your own drawing, by your own architectural design, it can never make sense. Yes, sir. So what am I saying to us this evening? That if we must follow God, we must get to a point where we need to understand that our thoughts, our wisdom, our setting, our understanding, our degrees has nothing to do with either what God is saying to us is right or wrong, but we have to stay in total obedience to follow what God is sharing with us for time. There's no obedience that does not have inconvenience in it. There's no obedience that does not have something you have to give up or to take away for it to manifest. 
everything you have to do, anytime you have to be, because it means that you are that thing was never what we are doing before. It means you have to come into it and new or afresh. So, for instance, obey your father and your mother. If we are doing it before, he won't say obey. If he says do this to this, that means that means it's something you are coming to and new. It's something you are just coming to afresh. Yeah. It means that your old knowledge cannot serve the current place that God wants yes, to take sir. you to. Praise God. Uh, so you yeah. need a, a kind of wisdom, a kind of uh, uh, um, structured obedience to be able to do all that God has designed for you. Tell your neighbor, God has great plans for you. God has great plans for you. And that plan will not fail in the name of Jesus. So like I said before, I said, don't let your background, your past, your history be a reason not to serve or obey God wholeheartedly. If God can use Abraham, let God use you. Say to your neighbor, if God can use Abraham, if God can use Abraham let, God use you. let God use you. This is where I'm going. When God told Abraham that he was going to, when he, sh- he gave him his promise, shared his covenant with him, told him all that he asked for him, God said that particular Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 with a great promise. But before that promise was an instruction, can you back up to that number 1 again? 12, 12 1. You see, he said, now the Lord has said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kingdom and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. So immediately after an instruction comes God's blessings. Immediately after everything that God has asked you to do and you follow suit, comes God's love in enormous ways. But is checking out for the state of your heart. You know, I always said that the reason why so many people does not have what they are asking for is that God knows that if, if He gives it to them, He will move. Right before my eyes, I've seen somebody who got a blessing, who was supposed to be a blessing. And from that, they will stop seeing the person in the choir. Praise God. I choose not to mention yeah. names. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, choose, <laughs> I choose not to mention names. Hallelujah. So, if, so most people are really just looking for God. Because of what they want to get from him. Yes. Not because they want to stay true to whatever he wants to ask them to do. So if you say there is a work you have with God, then that means there is a work you also have to do for God. Hallelujah. Mm. But God will always check the intent of your heart to check if he should give you what you are asking for part-time. Mm. Secondly is that he also knows how much you can be a part-time. Mm. So he will not give you what to bring into shame or into destruction. Mm. But what I'm going this evening is to let us know that obedience always precedes a blessing or a next level that you are trying to enter into or you are trying to um, step into. Praise God. Now, very beautiful story. Abraham did not complain. This man was barren and was devastated. So I was asking myself, has God showed him love before that time? Did, Did God give him a jet before that time? Did he send him horses? So because I was, I'm actually curious to find out what made him believe God, God at 75. That's almost a write-off if you check it. To say somebody is barren, does he is clueless about this uh, having a child or something. And God is saying, go this way. And he just stood. At least what Bishop has told us is that if it is not in the Bible, it's probably that that thing is not relevant to the story or the land that they want to pick, pick out. So the moment God said this, what we saw next was God's blessing. What Abraham did next was that he moved. Not checking to see either it was going to be uh, it was going to be favorable, it's not going to be favorable. He didn't use, he didn't use um, uh, what was this thing called? Weather reports, weather forecast to go and check if the land was going to was going to be a great land or something. He just moved. That is some measure of Mumu State movement. Not knowing what the future holds, but because you know who holds the future, you just step into it. So I'm, I want to encourage us this evening on this matter of obedience so that we will not begin to think that it is by your understanding of that particular thing part time that makes that will have to make you obey. No. It is that you are willing to obey with or without understanding that thing. There's a scripture I like so much. He says, even if you slay me, I will serve you. Hallelujah. So that's the extreme of either God blesses you or he doesn't. Either it's, you are going the right way or he doesn't. But there's a, there's a backing that I know. The Bishop always tells us that head or tail as Christians that we are ah, winners. Yes. It means we fight from victory and not from any platform of we're not fighting fair. We're not fighting maybe we will win or we will not win. A year, a year, a year. No, we know already that the outcome of this journey that we are on is winning. Hallelujah. 
So obedience in this context is just speaking to following like we don't know where we are going yes. and we are willing to follow regardless. Praise God. As Abraham began this journey of his obedience, it was actually laced with faith. Because he did not know what he was going to receive. He didn't know what was coming his way, but he chose to move regardless because what he had faith in God that this God will not fail or leave him alone. Hallelujah. It takes willingness to obey, but it takes faith to receive the reward. That's why Abraham to date is called the father of faith. Let me take that again. It takes willingness to obey, but it takes faith to receive the reward from God. That is why Abraham to date is called the father of faith. God's first promise was to make him a great nation. The second is to make him fruitful. Verse 7 now says, I will establish my covenant between me, you and I. Then Genesis 20, 22, verse 1 and 1 and 20. And, uh, Genesis 22, 1. Genesis 22, chapter 1. Sorry, Genesis 22. Okay, verse 18. It says, everything that Abraham got from God, everything that he has become, everything that he inherited, was things that, just by the singular act of faith or obedience, he got everything. So Abraham did not do more than obeying for him to be called father of many nations, for him to have a great name, for him to be for to nations of the earth to be blessed through him, for his seed to stand at the gate of his enemies. All of these things that Abraham got was because this man chose to obey God. How much of things are you missing in your life right now? Because God has told you something and you're not doing it. Can you ask yourself genuinely? The how much of God's promises am I missing right now? Mm. Because I have no, I have chosen not to obey mm. what God is asking me to do by time. Or he has asked you to do before. But just because you feel that God is not that wicked. The God I serve is a very nice God. For every level that you choose not to obey, when you have to move again, you have to come back to write the exam. Mm. I don't know if you understand that. Yeah. So if you, if you by chance do Uruguru and you passed, by the time you are supposed to get to that level again, to achieve that same level, you have to come back to that level of obedience again. For, for instance, if you are supposed to have been fasting every Wednesday since January to date, and you are not fasting, if you are supposed to go to your next level, you will still have to start fasting, because fasting is a great sight. Did that get to somebody? You cannot even laugh again. It's already sounding like, like I have, like I have planned. So let me just make progress to John chapter 16, verse, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. He said, albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and show you things to come. This place just speaks to understand that the Holy Spirit is the mouthpiece of God. He shares God's counsel to us every time. I wrote a song sometimes when I shared with Bishop, but because of the love of that he has and the patience he has in knowing that when people start their Christian work of faith, you need to be very patient with them in dealing with them. He did not respond by saying the song was fantastic. He just said the God that we serve is not a silent God. I did not get it until a study came after then and I realized that God is always speaking. It depends on who is listening or who is available to hear in part time. The heaven is always open. If you want God to, if you want to know what God taught his part time or anything, God is available to speak. In fact, before he does a thing, he says it. He says it. To prove to you that I'm the one that sees the thing and comes to pass. So he will brag to you first that I'm coming. Home. That's our God. I'm coming. That's our God. The God that will tell you, say, it's also there, go. This will happen. By this time, you know, we see that scripture several times. We all see the scripture that says that by this time tomorrow, mm. by this time next week, yes, by this time, it means that God is always talking and he has so much to say. It depends on if we are ready to either listen to him or to obey what God is asking us to do part time. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this Holy Spirit conveys the thought of the Father. Disobeying the Holy Spirit is disobeying God the Father. The importance of obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's the topic for tonight again. The importance of obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Philippians 2, verse 13. He said, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. 13 now says, For it is God, okay, it's the same thing. See, for it is God who works in you to do, who works in you, both to, both to will and to work out his good pleasure. The Holy Spirit always helps us to live by God's plan and God's purpose. That means, I'm saying all of this for us to know, that if you are disobedient to God's spirit for time, all of what I'm mentioning now are things that you may not be enjoying. So you probably need to check yourself how evident or how strong the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in your life and how you are taking it to enter into your next level. If you have questions around progress, around the things that are supposed to be working right and it's not working, it may mean that you have been ignoring a voice that has been telling you this is the way to go and you are choosing not to walk in it. So, I want to list to us these five things that I call the importance of the obedience of the leading of the Holy Spirit. So, number one says, from that scripture, that's Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, helping us to live by God's plan and God's purpose. That Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, you know, where it says that, where he, he, God promised Abraham is that he wants to, he called him, he wants to give him a great name. So God has great plans for us. God has a great agenda for us. He has designed beautiful things for us to walk into. Number two. So, number one is that it helps us to live by God's plan and God's purpose. That's the importance of the obedience of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Number two says, it helps us to inherit the promises of the great plans he has for us. That will be found in Job chapter 36, verse 11. He helps us to inherit the promises of the great plans he has for us. Job 36, verse 11. Very popular scriptures. He says, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number three, provision. Provision. The Spirit of God helps us to harness or to obtain the provision that God gives for every vision he gives to us. It is through God's Spirit that you can really, 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 really lay your hands on the treasures that God wants to give you for any vision that he wants you to achieve. You know, that I want us that scripture in um, uh, okay. So Isaiah 30, verse, verse 21. So that for provision, it says the spirit of God helps us to obtain or to receive the provision that God gives us for every vision he gives. So instead of Abraham to kill Isaac, God sent him a ram. Yes, sir. You know, imagine at that point. Abraham did not hear God. Yes. Or he chose not to obey. Because he didn't just say, he said, look. So there was an instruction to look, which is actually still leading to obedience. And then when he saw it, he knew that God already made a plan. What is that thing you are asking God for in this season and this time? And he's pointing to you part time, but you cannot see it because you are disobedient. So I want us to be encouraged, not to just come at us, but to be encouraged in the Lord that we should take obedience matter seriously. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because in, it is in it that we can actually enter into our inheritance and everything that God has planned in store for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this place, it says that if it is God's will, then it will be God's bill. Hallelujah. I'll tell that again. If it is God's will, it's going to be God's bill. Bill. Send me the bill. If it is God that told you to do that thing, if it's one that has designed that you should do this thing, set you out to get, get married, set you out to start a mission, set you out to do a, a project, set you out to start a business. If it is God's will, then it will be God's deal. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I want us to um, see Isaiah chapter 30 verse, okay, verse 21. It says, And I ye shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right and when ye turn to the left. The Holy Spirit will guide us. 
it would instruct you to see what God is saying to you for time for that wow. situation. Let's just say a word of prayer and say, Father, all that you are telling me this is that time. Help me to pay attention to it. What you want me to understand in this time and season that I'm going through in my life, that I'm walking through in my life, help me to see what you want me to really understand. Help me, Lord, to harness that thing. Help me to achieve it. That thing you are asking me to see. Lord, grant unto me that grace, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to hear you effectively and to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Number four says, the Holy Spirit corrects us. The Holy Spirit of God corrects us. Second Timothy chapter three verse. Second Timothy chapter three verse sixteen. Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. You see, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Holy Spirit corrects us. It's the same Spirit that can tell you you are talking too much. It's the same spirit that can tell you now is not the time to talk. It's the spirit that, that can tell you now is the time to keep quiet and go. It's that same spirit that also tells you now is the time to talk. This is what you should see. That spirit does not just comfort us, it corrects us. It tells us what to do are right. It doesn't just leave us by ourselves to not find words to speak into every situation. It corrects the things that we have done in our mind that is not right. So it can reprove, it can correct. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lastly, in that same line, is that the Holy Spirit comforts us. Praise God. He said, I will send you a comforter. When you need strength, when you need some encouragement, like Bishop will always say that everybody can use some encouragement at every point in time. The Holy Spirit comforts us. The Holy Spirit tells us what we can tell you. Don't worry. Things will get better. In fact, there are several scriptures where he can suggest to you and say, fear not. I am with you. Fear not. I am this. Fear not, I'm coming. Fear not, I'm this. So what the Holy Spirit has actually does for us in this passage is that He comforts us. He tells us to be calm. He tells us not to be what to, to worry. That He is with us. That He's showing us the way. That He's walking with us even we cannot see. It. I like that song that um, these guys converted and they said that even when I don't see it is walking, even when I can feel it is walking. He never stops. He never stops walking. He never stops, he never stops walking. Even when I don't see it is walking. Even when I can feel it is walking. He never stops, he never stops walking. He never stops, he never stops walking. Praise God. The Holy Spirit corrects us, he comforts us. So these are the five things I've listed to us this evening. Concerning the importance of, of obeying the leading of the Holy Spirit, time. All of these are values for what the Holy Spirit can do. Are values for what the Holy Spirit has the capacity of doing in our lives per time. So it means that we might be missing out a great deal if we are not paying attention to total obedience of God's instruction for us per time. People of God, it's a good time for us to know that God wants to do so much with us or for us that if we, that we also have a very big role to play in how much we are willing to obey and how much we are also willing to receive these things by faith. So in conclusion, I say here that if generational blessings can be gotten through Abraham by obedience, then the fall of man was also orchestrated by the disobedience of another man, which is Adam. Now, there's a very big need for us to begin to pay attention greatly to the solid of obedience in our day-to-day -day life especially the things that concerns what the Holy Spirit is telling us. Amen. Amen. So like I said again, I said, if generational blessings can be transferred or wealth through Abraham, you know, we should be sing that song a lot. Abraham, Abraham's blessings are mine. You know, I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham, blessings are mine. It means that we need to start to take seriously the sort of obedience in small matters in seemingly large scale or big matters, the Holy Spirit is ready to teach you, is ready to show us, is ready to guide us, is ready to comfort us, is ready to comfort, is ready to correct us at every point in time. If we are obedient, first of all, if we are willing, and secondly, if we are obedient to follow through what God is saying per time. So please remember this, this thing again, that if it takes willingness to obey God, but it also takes faith, to receive the reward. 
So you must be willing to obey and you must have faith to receive the promise. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's see that scripture in Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Matthew 21, verse 22. It says, Whatsoever you shall ask for in prayer, believing <coughs> in faith, some version say in faith, ye shall receive. That's why I brought that out from that. It takes willingness to obey God, but it takes faith to receive that which God has planned for us to achieve. There's a need for us to take obedience conversation seriously. Because those are the, that's a very important thing for us to know in our lives, that if we must make progress, if we must be in God's will, if we must do all that God has designed for us to do, we must be willing to stay in total obedience to the things of God. Let's bow our heads as we pray this evening and say, Father, help me to stay obedient to you. Father, help me, Lord, to stay obedient to your word, to begin to enjoy the importance of obedience in the living of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. In this month that I mean, this month of refreshing, Lord, help me, Lord, to always receive, to, to be willing to obey and to have the faith to receive the promises that you have designed for me in the name of Jesus, to be able to get all that you have planned for me in the name of Jesus. We pray with me. Rapa kosha te rada kaba ashta. En gasha ti kaba rapa kasho ta kene gede. En rapa da ba kosha te kipa kata ba. En rapa da gada ba ash. Eke da ba. Are you praying? Come on, come on. Say, Father, help me to stay willing to obey your word in the name of Jesus and to do, Lord, all that you're asking me to do at this time and season. Thank you, Jesus, for answer prayers. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Like I said, if it is God's will, then it's going to be God's will. People of God, let's put our hands together for Jesus.